Welcome, welcome. This is our Qigong teacher training alumni panel. And so today we just thought it'd be a great idea to bring on a few of the Qigong teacher training graduates and just get an idea of how it went for them during the course and what they've been up to since graduating. So today we are joined by Dr. Sonia Barrett in Los Angeles, California. We have Miss Sherry Davis, Morning Crane Pacific Northwest in Pacific Northwest, Seattle area. Mr. Chi Tom Walsh in San Jose, <laughs> California. And Miss Jen Primer also in San Jose, California. So welcome to the Zoom and hello. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, Thank let's just you. get these. Oh, some balloons <laughs> to celebrate. <laughs> I love these new emojis now. We're just gonna dive right into the questions and then we'll give each one of the alums a chance to answer. So the very first question, oh, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm Parisa Shelton. Mm -hmm. I think you probably know me by now, but just in case. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first question is, Please share with us the most significant transformation you've seen in your clients or in the people that you serve since completing the Qigong teacher training course. Okay, Chi Tom, you're Zoom greened first, so you go first. Okay, excellent. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, one and all. It's good to see everyone, and uh, what a privilege it is to be here. Uh, I was, I love the question, and when I completed the uh, teacher training, uh, I was asked to teach uh, our practices to uh, a bunch of nurses and trauma nurses, uh, and I was really new at it, and it was, you know, like a, pretty much overwhelming uh, in the sense that there was like 40 to 60 people, and so, um, so anyhow, I went ahead and led the class, uh, the nurses were from Valley Medical Center, and at the completion of a 45-minute class, the and the head facilitator ran up, up to me and gave me a big old monster hug and was literally crying see i mean and this was a no-nonsense hug i mean this went on for a bit of time yeah and she was just so 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 grateful and then i was walking out to the car after tidying up some things and uh, a woman followed me out and she was a head trauma nurse for valley med and she said, I can't figure it out. All, all the pain in my shoulders and my neck and my headache is gone. And and I was thinking to myself, and this is only 45 minutes, you know, and so it was pretty significant. Uh, then another time uh, I was asked to do uh, a uh, all men's help, to help host an all men's retreat in uh, uh, San Damiano. And the age of the uh, men were late teens to probably in their 80s. And there was about 50 of them there for three days. And I went ahead and led our practices. And it was the most beautiful thing you could ever see. There, you have Vietnam vets doing, you know, all the things. You have the young teenagers doing all the things. And, and then they, after an hour, the men were literally glowing. They were just so, 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 so jazzed. And... Uh, they're just beaming, you know, and there was quite a bit of talk for the next few days. And then lastly, the, uh, when uh, there was a city called Paradise here in California, and it basically burned to the ground. And my friend asked me to come up and help counsel the families and the teenagers uh, because they'd been so traumatized, you know. Um, and so I went up to Paradise and to give you an idea of what it was like, I drove up there and you know, I wasn't thinking about it. And I, I was just hungry. <laughs> the town burned down. <laughs> Nothing to eat. Oh <laughs> I will plot twist. <laughs> so anyhow, <laughs> I figured that out. And then uh, we were up on someone's property, uh, about 50 acres of on a bluff. And then we were able to counsel 
these young families who lost everything. And the families literally had to be divided up because there was no place to stay. So half of the family was in Nevada and the other half was able to find something in California, you know? And so just to be able to share these practices to give them tools to kind of like start to heal that post-traumatic stress. So those are just three, there's many, many more, but I think those were just kind of some three highlights I just went on real quick. So yeah. thank you for the opportunity to share. Yeah, thank you, Chi Tom. I, I remember those fires in paradise. That was, it was shocking. And so what a blessing for you to be able to go there and to share this information and wisdom and, and help, help the people during that specific time in human history, because that was, that was really a, a travesty of what happened. So that's mm -hmm. really when these practices can show up and and help humanity in a major way so that's that's really neat thank you for sharing that thank you thank you okay i see dr sonia next sonia share with us the most significant transformation that you've seen in your clients or those you've served i hear this this is very common i think from what i've seen with with folks and i think it's more the stress level it's the um it's how they process stress that they seem to feel the most relief from um and uh and also yes they're i don't think sometimes they expect that maybe that that pain or that twinge you know and maybe a certain part of the body um that it's going to go away but a lot of times i think that they notice the how calm they feel and then um and then of course then maybe they they notice that oh uh, i'm not feeling this pain anymore now um i a while back in the very beginning you know i i did more uh teaching but then um I, well teaching and just sort of also practicing as well but then i my schedule got really busy so i incorporated uh yes mainly with my retreats when I go to the retreats. And I have to say real quickly, the, the other part of it that is has been great for people is even if I'm not teaching them the practice, but the philosophy, the information um, it, it is also very profound and, and also being able to do this without having to necessarily do it actually physically do it but getting people to do some of it in their minds as, as chris um has has taught and uh simple 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 practices simple things that you can tell somebody and that and they can do it so i think for me that's what i've seen the most because i work with mainly a lot of people dealing with stress or you know ptsd or uh, fear or you know all all of these various um emotional uh, responses in the body and that's what you want to do is calm the person so that's what I hear um, most of and people miss miss when I was actually doing more uh, teaching um, so I, I miss being able to do it as well so I am really looking forward to incorporate it and and Tom certainly encourages that like listening to Tom certainly encourages that but Qigong is is always part of my life like just of my life and of my clients yes so thank, thank you. you so much mm -hmm. and for those those of you who don't know dr sonia is a neuroscientist and she does biofeedback and helps people with their brain wave frequencies and i've taken a number number of classes with her and i you do introduce the concepts of qigong and chinese medicine throughout your teachings part of your being and what and what you're doing so that that's fantastic yeah. thank you i figure i'd share yeah. more of that based on your questions i was trying not to like take all the answers <laughs> and <laughs> shove it into one <laughs> response i'm trying to save some of it i'm biting you off care. little pieces for each question yeah thank you <laughs> i appreciate that <laughs> The reality is, is also Dr. Sonia has been in the health field for gosh, she's worked with some of the greatest people in the industry, Dr. Sabi. I mean, she's, she's definitely yeah. has been part of this uh, healing 
community and awakening people of, you know, of their health. And so the very fact that she was able to, uh, you know, see the value for herself and then pass that forward within her own teachings, I think is, is tremendous. And don't you have a, don't you have a documentary out there as well too? Oh, the business. Him? Yeah. The business of disease. Um, okay. It's yeah, it's, it's out there. I think it's still there. Distribution. I think my seven years is, is I think there now. Um, but yeah, you can still find it. It was on Amazon Prime and a, just a lot of other places, YouTube. Um, mm. But so you can still find it. See, I was like, again, I was like trying to save. That's so okay. Much. She's so no, she's no, I, just, I, I like your humble. I like. I appreciate the humbleness. And you said the word out there, and I thought you were talking about me. I was like, oh, is that a clue? I can come back in for some feedback. <laughs> yeah, you need to come back in. Well, you know, I you know I can talk a lot. So like. Yeah, I'm curving it. You said three and a half minutes. I'm like, okay. zip it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Marissa said three and a half minutes. I'm like, mm, zip it. Because mm -hmm. I can't and talk. That, that's for, for Mr. Chris, too, because I always say, my man sure does like to talk. Mm -hmm. Chris and I like talking. We can talk. Yeah, we like talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should see our chat. Something like that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And Sonia, one thing I remember when we were in our teacher training class mm -hmm. together, you shared with me some of your stories of some of the businesses you had. And I was really inspired because you were a total survivor. Oh. I mean, so so <laughs> thank you for sharing that. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have. I've definitely explored many, you know, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. My heart is bursting. Okay, Ms. Sherry Davis, please share with us the most significant transformations you've seen in those that you serve since Qigong teacher training. Um, so I teach classes in the health and hospital system, and I pretty consistently have the same people show up, which fills my heart um, because they've definitely taken a vested interest in their health. Um, one of the things that I think that Western medicine kind of misses is the emotional component that's associated with physical health. So I know um, that being able to speak to that while we're in the practice and doing the practice um, has definitely illuminated some people to uh, just viewing their health through a new lens. Um, I also know that at least one of the clients that um, you know, started showing up on a regular basis, actually messaged me and told me that through a series of practices that she experienced through those classes actually helped her to lower her blood pressure without medication. And I was like, please forward that to the county. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let them know that these classes are impactful. And, you know, even even somebody that isn't practicing regularly, I'll give you an example. Last week, I went to um, health and wellness workshop where I got to demonstrate Qigong to um, senior population who's able, um, most if not all, had never heard of Qigong, um, came into the room not really knowing what to expect. Um, and as I spoke to them and actually started demonstrating the practice, I could see the light bulb going on and more and more people were pouring into this room and I was allowing a bit of Q&A as I was demonstrating the practice. And one of the things that I really love the most about Qigong is that um, you can really, you can share the practice. I could demonstrate, you know, the full expression of what we're doing, but also there was one person in there that was in a wheelchair and I actually pulled over a chair and sat down and invited them to practice with me while mm. seated. And that was super, super impactful. And I also was able to speak to them about the mind-body connection. And, and, you know, our seniors are a lot more aware of what's going wrong with their bodies. Um, they're not so much in their head, but, they, you know, so they can relate to, uh, like, when we're patting the meridians, you know, having that mind body connection being able to feel in, into that to also take charge of their health in a different way because you know, the older generations don't have the same understanding that we do about mind body connection they haven't necessarily been exposed to this type of information um so having them 
really feel into the practice. It's like a see for yourself type of experience. Like, let's do this and then tell me how you feel afterwards. And that was by the end of the class, they were all going to their director. When is she coming to teach this year? <laughs> <laughs> so, Bring her yeah, back. <laughs> yeah. So seeing the way that it impacts people in real time, even, you know, from somebody who shows up to multiple classes to somebody that I know that I have just the short amount of time to make an impact on them and, and watching the lights come on, watching them do the practice and the, you know, the awareness come that yes, there, you know, there is this connection, there is this understanding, there is this alternative instead of like calling my doctor, say I hurt and getting a prescription. This is, you know, this is real time, uh, real holistic health and healing. That's cool. Thank you so much. And for those of you who don't know, Sherry Davis is our first affiliate, Morning Crane affiliate number one. So always yeah, a special Pacific, place. Pacific, Pacific Northwest. So she's representing Morning Crane wow. in the Pacific Northwest. And and the other thing too is that she's been very humble about it. Sherry also has been uh, teaching classes for us for Santa Clara County as well too. So she's been just like Tom has been a big help in spreading and, and helping to take care because we're in charge of the what is it, 33,000 employees for employee wellness. That's what's how many people? 35,000 in in Santa Clara County. And so uh the fact that they're able to go out there and teach and um and be able to spread this I think is quite amazing. So yeah. And again, Sherry's the first one first Morning Crane affiliate in the Pacific Northwest. The goal is around the world, Morning Crane around the world. And uh, what I was talking about Parisa with is uh, Christine, who's not on the phone here. She's Morning Crane San Jose, uh, is that if, whether it's in the Bay Area, let's say there's multiple uh, practitioners in the Bay Area. So let's say Tom starts his Morning Crane Willow Glen. What I am contemplating is for the different areas, and I'm throwing this out there to you, Sherry, because you've been our first affiliate, is to come up with an image. So instead of it saying Seattle, but something that will be clever, that will uh, be able to differentiate the different Morning Crane affiliates from. You mean a, a different font, right? Yeah, a different font or some kind of little image, you know, or something to go on to, you know, at the end of like, um, um, you know, Morning Crane uh, uh, Pacific Northwest. I would love to spread the the Qigong Morning Crane love all around the Pacific Northwest. So um, <laughs> we'll we'll definitely put that out into the vortex. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, and also real quick side note: what's really cool about the World Wide Web is that here's Sherry in the Pacific Northwest servicing people in Santa Clara County, helping the patients of the hospital. So that to me, that's like. That's incredible. And 10, 15 years ago, that wouldn't have been possible. So that's pretty cool. You know, yeah. one more thing I want to say is, you know, um, I started Morning Crane Pacific Northwest in December 2019. That's when we came together. And then January, February, we went into lockdown. And I was like, how am I going to move forward? How am I going to, to do this? I had plans for brick and mortar. This isn't happening. And I watched Chris and Parisa pivot their own practice everything really and opens up these um opportunities to be in the virtual space and now i'm like sure now i have the opportunity and i'm looking around at brick and mortar but i also love the ability to be anywhere and impact anybody so um, the blessings did come out of the pandemic um we could scale this to a larger level and i'm just Super grateful to you guys for um, for the opportunity to be an affiliate. Yeah, Aww. love having you. you. Okay, Miss Jen Primer, rhymes with swimmer, my favorite <laughs> high school PE teacher. Please share with us, <laughs> with us the significant transformation you've seen in your clients or your students. Okay, since doing she sports. says that I'm her favorite teacher because she hasn't had me as a teacher. So. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I teach high school PE and, um, that's an interest, you know, it's teenagers. And so, you know, teenagers are too cool for everything. Um, and as part of our course one curriculum, it's individual dual sports, aquatics and dance. So therefore I can introduce Qigong to them because that's an individual activity. So, uh, my coworker and I, every, um, 
right before Christmas time for six weeks, uh, the holiday uh, finals, we do a yoga Pilates and Qigong um, unit with them. Whether they like it or not, they get a few days of it. Um, and I weekly host um, Qigong practice for students during study hall. And I have one that has been coming pretty much every week since last year. Um, she has had a lot of um, help, uh, her ADHD. She's got lots of stuff that she uses it for. She has a sporting event that day. She loves to come and do Qigong with me because it helps kind of her mentally focus. Um, and I've had a lot of students use practices in their sporting events. Um, I had a student tell me how they, she shook a tree before her free throws to help release her nerves in order to, you know, make her free throws. Um, but I think the one that I, the most significant thing that just makes my, just heart, just like the Grinch get big, 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 um, is that recently um, there was a girl who we, we started doing the practice and immediately, as soon as like she pulled heavens because she knew it was about emotions and feelings, she just started breaking down. And I didn't see it because I was leading and she had to leave the room. And it was a very hard, there's a lot of stuff going on for her. So she's actually come a few times to my study hall to work with me. And she had on her um, 15th birthday, she had probably the world's crappiest birthday. Like she just had people just crap all over her on her birthday and a really hard time. And so I was able to help her kind of process that and go through with that. And she came and she really thought it out because she realized what it was there. And the best part was um, maybe a couple weeks ago, I noticed her and a, a classmate come in a little late and the classmate was um, very upset. I could just tell there was a lot going on with her. And I walked over to her and I said, is she okay? And she goes, well, I said, why don't you go outside and you go have her shake a tree? Why don't you go take her? And she took her and she was gone for a while. And I started to get a little nervous. I was like, okay, I told you just to go out there and, you know, shake a couple trees and, you know, TikTok, <laughs> where, where'd you go? And I was a little upset because I thought she took advantage. Well, we start, we do our run and all of a sudden they come up and her friend was just to see the transformation for wow. what she looked like to where she was. And she says, oh no. And she told her, she took her and she was tossing stones and shaking trees and doing all this stuff. And she couldn't, she was just beaming and she's like ready to be a Qigong teacher. And she just, it was so beautiful because now She's, she brought her with her during study hall. So my study hall is growing and they can come or go as they need. But it was just like, wow, I only did this with her a few times and she recognized the benefit. Her friend was in need. I just gave them the opportunity. I encouraged her and it was like, this is a thing they can have, a tool they can have for the rest of their life. And Again, teenagers are hard nuts to crack. It's it's a it's they need it as much if not more than some of the rest of us. So for me, every time I can just introduce it to someone and have someone get some relief or or help from it, it's just beautiful. It's just I just feel so happy to be able to share that with people. So it's that was my most significant thing that has come out of this. That's to date. so cute. That is so cute how she shared it. You shared it yeah. and then the teen sharing it with the other teens. That is, yeah. my heart is growing like yes. the Grinch. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, it was my pleasure. Yeah, That's you know, really cool. and one of the things also about uh, Gen 2 is that to me, it's about application, right? The, the best test of how well these practices work is applying it to your own life. And Jen has had to, you know, we all muster through things, but Jen has had to muster through some things this year, especially this past year. And on top of being in our, our mastermind program and on top of raising kids and, and teaching. And so I think that's, that's really testimonial, you know, because we talk about there's different types of styles of Qigong and there's different courses out there. We say that our, this course here is the most comprehensive because we're not just teaching instructors because it feels good. Feeling good is a byproduct and who doesn't want to feel good? I love having dopamine dumps. And uh, 
That's why I go see Dr. Sonia, by the way, to get my dopamine dump. <laughs> Anyways, Are you uh, sure it's dopamine or serotonin? Okay, yeah. I think it's a combination of everything. It, right? He he so, comes to get high in a good he, way. He likes the oxytocin. <laughs> yeah. But, being uh, able as the excuse me, as I say, but as the shit shows up, still being able to show up. <laughs> right? Still being able to show up. Because still shit's always going to be there no matter what. And and so and then the other thing about Jen too is that she's been um uh really big as far as helping us with edits on our book our curative program uh she just came up there's a complicated chart in our curative program of trying to describe what acupuncture points connect from one acupuncture meridian to the other and what time of day that happens and she just put together a beautiful chart for that program actually and so uh yeah so thank you for that that's cool. Yeah, thank you. And actually, what you just talked about, Mr. Chris, is going to be leading in a great lead into the next question, which is, how has Qigong teacher training course impacted your professional practice or and or personal life and vitality? When I first started, I had no idea how much I was missing. We went through teacher one and teacher two, and then uh, and I, you know, you're just doing the best you can and everything. Cause it's a whole nother concept and a way of thinking and everything. And so, uh, for me, I don't like things that are stagnant. I always want to continue to grow so that things are fresh and that I show up excited about teaching the class or, or, or sharing with someone because that contagious enthusiasm goes a long way. And if I'm stagnant, you know, it's like, wow, 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 you know? And so, um, so the, the, it's impacted me because it's encouraging me to be the best version of myself. And as an example, today before uh, well, I walked the dog, but before then I viewed one of Chris's uh, Wednesday classes and uh, he had reintroduced the practice where you pull uh, uh, the chi from your perineum up the center into your brain and then up your spine and into your brain, then the right side, and then the left side, you know, and those are so refreshing. Those are so refreshing, you know, because it's not an everyday practice that we're taught, you know, but uh, it adds a lot of value. And I'm, you know, I'm legitimately excited about it. So, so it's impacted me uh, as it's given me, I'm passionate about this. And I have the tools to continue to develop as I continue to understand. You know, and you know, and I'm gentle with myself because it's thousands of years, and you know, I need another few thousand years to live before I get this thing figured out. But I love the beginning steps. So I'm just taking a baby step on it, and so, and then of course the byproduct is is my health has been restored. So how lucky am I? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonia. As I was saying before, for me, it has been just incredibly beneficial in terms of not just the um not just the techniques not just the steps but i am very into science and i think for me being able to really decipher more about these moves these 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 um these practices and 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 what could possibly truly be happening and why they have to be done the way that they have to be done it really helps me and has helped me uh in even understanding things about what my client uh is experiencing so i'm talking again about the philosophy the science um that that chris has shared um in simplified format um as to what what's going on in each organ what's going on in the body and the emotional component and so for me i i put it all together and having you know gone back to um school for such an interesting and tough subject as um as neuroscience i was able to see even more understand even more about the the brain um, the science that is known and understood and still still being um, un unraveled, but really incorporate that information. I'm like, oh, so that's what the ancients were doing. That's what they were attempting to do. That's why this works on this organ. That's why the brain is is stimulated. You know, that's why. So there was there's a lot of that. 
And so being able to then share, for example, the, um, the, the, the body clock, I think is a really significant one when I'm talking to clients. Um, and, and I'm able to say, well, what, you know, what's going, what, What's actually happening? It's like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm awake. I tend to wake up at this particular time or this is happening to me then. And so I'm able to share some of that and say, well, maybe, you know, this is what's you know, possibly going on with this particular uh, organ uh, in the body. And then there are clients where I feel like, okay, you know what? I'm going to turn you over to Chris. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to send you to Chris, because I think he, he's going to be able to, to help you with this. So, so it just, it, it's just been very awesome to me um, on and on and on. And I'm, I'm, dis I'm discovering more about the, the knowledge, the philosophy. And, uh, and again, let me say real quickly, I love the part where the mind incorporating the mind and the ability to do these practices in your mind and get the results. I think the science of that aspect is very, very, um, very profound for me. And so um, anyway, I, I just, I love it. That's cool. Yeah. So fascinating. It's very fascinating. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Okay. Sherry. It's impacted me on a number of levels. It's certainly given me the confidence and the knowledge to put myself out there and share the practice and, and the modality with others. Um, personally, it's given me numerous tools to deal with my own stuff. Um, I know originally when I was introdu introduced to Qigong was through the practice of Tai Chi. At that time, I had a lot of serious medical issues and I actually went to see Chris in clinic. So I got to experience medical Qigong before I got into the practice itself. And that was a real game changer to me. Um, it was pretty evident uh, what was going on with me had a significant emotional component to it. So um, going through training gave me a deeper understanding of what's held in my body. Um, I'm a highly sensitive person, so I can actually, you know, feel into others and what's going on in their body. Um, interestingly enough, as I went after I graduated from teacher training, um, as I would work with clients, I would instinctively like know what was going on in their body. And it's helped me to be able to really dive in at a deeper level and meet people where they're at. Um, I think that's probably the most impactful thing for me is that anyone that I encounter, you know, through teaching or working with them, I can really meet them where they're at because I understand personally how the tools um, and the information and the practice itself has um, helped me. So I can speak from a place of authenticity about how impactful teacher training is. Um, I went through level one having absolutely zero intention of teaching other people. Um, I really wanted to dive in for deeper self-awareness, deeper understanding. Um, I had a real lack of confidence, but through level one, learning so many light bulbs went off. And like Sonia, I'm also um, very much about the science. Well, why does this work and how does it work? And let me know the information besides the feeling part. Um, when I went through level two, I absolutely had a desire um, to teach and to share with others because I've, I felt my own personal transformation. Um, people watched by transformation wanted to know, like, what are you doing? Um, so it, it's just it's been amazing for me. And now that I work with large groups, I work with a lot of, I mean, weekly, I work with, you know, 20 people in a group and um, I do sound healing. So I know that through the frequency and the vibration, I can see what's going on with people. But Qigong also helps me to clear that energy. Because as much as I ground and shield and, you know, I observe people's stuff without like taking it on, like I did before I had these tools, um, still sometimes you get a little bit of icky sticky, you know? So uh, this also helps me to clear my own energy field from being around groups of people and working in groups and, and being aware of what's happening with other people. So it's reinforced the understanding and the need that 
we practicing energetic hygiene is just as important as physical hygiene. We really have to keep ourselves clear because depending on the types of people you're around or the types of, you know, the type of person that you are, you can unconsciously take things into your field. Um, and so you want to keep that clear. You want to understand what's truly mine. What am I maybe just picking up on and how can I use these practices to really help me to keep the field clear? Um, it's, you know, hygiene is something we need to practice daily. So um, super, super okay. grateful for that. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. I haven't thought of it in those terms, but that's right on. Yeah. Our energetic hygiene is just as important as brushing our teeth. <laughs> Thank you. Can I say something really quickly? Um, yes. Just based on um, what was just said. And, you know, again, I'm a hiker, so I hike um, pretty much every morning. So 5 30, 6 o'clock. I generally try to be on the trail by, by 6 30, depending on um, the light. And sometimes it has been a little dark, but I'm kind of nuts like that. So <laughs> I'm just Chigong an animal. <laughs> <laughs> but going out there, I tend to do, even if I can only do maybe, you know, um, three techniques, but I like to do it out in nature. So I tend to, when I'm out there, you know, on a trail, I will do some of it. And, and then, you know, um, I, I feel a big difference when I do that. I mean, I'm ready for the day. You know, I, maybe I just do three or four um, steps, uh, practices, exercises, and it just really works out in nature. And I, I really encourage that uh, a lot. So Qigong goes truly hand in hand with nature because it, it really is a na nature's technique. Totally. Sonia, can I, I just want to say that um, during pandemic, I would go to a specific spot that I have a tree. It's my Qigong tree and I would go and I would do my practice every day. And I do a full on practice. I'd just go in there. Um, after about a month, I realized that the plant life around me was responding and I would start, you know, my practice and then I would see the leaves moving. And I thought, am I going crazy? I mean, is this, <laughs> so I brought my daughter down there and I'm like, I want you to observe this tell me if i'm crazy and i started doing the practice <laughs> she saw everything like moving at the same time and then i would stop and then everything would just settle and then i get moving again and you know the ferns are moving and the trees are moving and she was like mom this is really weird i'm out of here uh, but <laughs> nature, nature does respond and that's amazing and i totally agree I, there's a spot in my backyard i practice um when I can in the spring and the summer, as soon as it stops raining, I get out there, but yes. So I just want to confirm that hang out a little bit longer. If you practice in the same place, because I promise you the energy of the plants around you will respond. Well, the wind, I, I, when you said that I do experience that, yeah. um, where if, if you're not paying attention, but if you really just kind of tuned into, to everything, you realize that the wind suddenly is very is very different it's suddenly very focused it's there it's part of you know part of the experience so so absolutely absolutely yeah when i do have time i do the, just a full on you know the whole process but when i can't rather than than do nothing even if i can only pull down the heavens three times you know i will i will just do that so yeah thank you that's cool <laughs> <laughs> sure you'll have to come to la and we'll do like a group hike with all of us together and a qigong i would love to i would love to on the list yeah. for this year awesome miss jen chris kind of alluded to the fact that i've been through a lot of ish this in 2023 i was hoping 2024 would be different but we're starting out with some good stuff so that's okay uh you know again it, ish happens and you just move through it um, what I think is interesting, I, and everybody's kind of touched on it, I think this is the missing element that you didn't really know that you needed. We talk about exercising, you know, diet, all these things. We talk about mental health and you have to take care of your mental health and all those kinds of things. But okay, what does that mean? There's no thing to do. Oh, journal, or I'm just in bash journaling. Journaling is great. But I feel like it's so tangible. And for me, I'm a, a wood type. So when I 
get into something. I'm like, Ooh, I like this. It's like, I have to, I do it six times a week or whatever it is. And then I saw such profound changes in such a short period of time. Um, and I didn't have a lot of major physical things ailing me like a lot of people, but I could just feel this overall. And like Sherry, I'm like, oh, I got to learn more. I've got to know more. And I really think our society is so disconnected from our own selves. We're so, we are so in our heads or in our smartphones or wherever, and we're not connected to nature and to natural cycles and to our own health and what's going on with us, that that has been the best thing is kind of bringing back to um, what is what it means to be a healthy individual and a healthy person and recognizing patterns, being gentle with yourself, growing as a person, um, being part of a community, sharing, having authentic connection with people, um, all those little things that I think are lost. And I, for me, Qigong has helped bring that back. I've always been a very personable person chatting with people, but I just, now I really feel this desire to really um, help people in, in any way that I can, just some little nugget of connection. And I think the more and more we can do that with one another, the healthier we are in ourselves, but with just the entire world, right? It's like trying to just spread the healing and that connection. Um, and so that has been the byproduct uh, of, of this personal practice with me that I've been able to weather all these storms that have come, but th even through the storms, finding a little nugget of when I could share with somebody else and help someone else um, in their time and, and, and get through their stuff. So that's kind of how I've been impacted um, through. Uh, and it would not have happened without QTT one and two. I, I mean, I was doing um, uh, Chi Club, but that all that ended, right? Cause we had to go back to the real world and I couldn't teach from home anymore how much as I would have loved to be with you guys every morning, but it, right. We had to go back to life. And so, um, but it was just like, Oh, it lit a fire and it was just a beautiful thing for you, for you guys to offer the world in that time. And I was able to stumble upon it and it's just, now it's just snowballing and it's beautiful and it's great. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. That's lovely way to be the change, Jen. Exactly. That's what my friend says. <laughs> yeah, I think, Jen, you just nailed it on the head is that it's one of those things that, you know, you do level one, you do level two, and and going through it, you see, start to see the benefits, but then it's after the fact, because the stuff still keeps on showing up. And, and right now, in this time space, uh, reality or false reality that we're in, um, there's a lot of stuff going on. And energetically, it's how can we still be um, I was talking to somebody about this earlier today. How can we still be the lighthouse amongst the darkness? Because there's always going to be shadows. And, uh, you know, you turn on the light, but guess what? That shadow's still there. And even within ourselves, we have our own shadows that we have to be aware of. And, and what Qigong does is it gives us these tools to be able to expand upon that light and be able to, to then be that light for somebody else if they are willing and and ready to ab absorb it you know that's beautiful thank you thank you so much okay i'm going to keep the train moving here what was your biggest concern or hesitation before enrolling in qigong teacher training course and how do you feel about that now first of all jen fun fact has a, a a name a nickname it's called west coast jen <laughs> and, <it> was, <laughs> That's true. and, so, west coast and so we had east coast jen and west coast jen and uh so i got a privilege to meet uh jen and and really connect with her during these classes and that was a thing about community it's that community we're building this community and it's so life-giving now as far as uh what was uh, my hesitation i didn't have a hesitation what i did have was uh decades of trauma that had collected and i was not able to mitigate it in other words i had the best doctors available to to me uh, they loved me but i wasn't i wasn't i was stabilized barely 
And so I, my wife, Michelle, was just really, really concerned. And at that time, she was building a business and she was collecting um, and gathering teachers to teach on different topics. And she happened to uh, roll into uh, Priest and Chris's office in Willow Glen. And uh, God willing, you know, just perfect, you know, the client didn't show up. And so they had, one, she had one-on-one -on -one time with Chris and Parisa for like an hour, an hour and a half. And then she came home and signed up for the teacher uh, one class and completed that. But she was able to introduce me and to start to take me to these classes uh, over there on Clark Avenue at the church there. And so that's how I got involved. But to, to give you an example of how stressed out of my mind I was when I shook the tree and dropped the post for the first time, my wedding ring flew about 20 feet. It just literally wow. came off of my finger. That's how much stuff I was releasing. And so um, so my biggest fear was it wouldn't work. That was my biggest fear because I didn't have any more mm -hmm. options. So that was my biggest fear was it wouldn't work. And then, you know, fast forward a bunch of years and uh, I had the privilege to build wonderful relationships in our community and, and I'm able to give back what was given to me. So thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I don't know. I, maybe I can call it a hesitation. I think my only hesitation was time, um, just because of the nature of my schedule. And so I just thought, oh, my God, am I going to be able to incorporate this and also retain, you know, whatever I'm, I'm being taught? Um, but for me, the very first time that I experienced um, Qigong, uh, with Chris, once again, it was, you know, our assistant that said, you don't, do you know, do you know them? Do you know Chris Sheldon? I'm like, no. And so she said, you got to meet them. You got to, you know, they're amazing. So that's kind of basically how that happened. But um, my, just my, my first experience of, of getting on there and, um, and, and working with it, I don't, maybe it was even on YouTube at first. But whatever it was, whatever that first time was, let me know that there had to be a second and a third and a fifth and a 200th. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's basically what happened. And and for me, I loved um, Chris's style. I, I just, I love his energy because um, I, I'm not very easily like impressed in the sense of, oh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just sign up for this. And it's very rare that I do that. And this was that moment where there was just something that said, you have to take this class. When, when this opportunity came for the teacher training, it was a no-brainer. You have to do it. And I did one number, the other ones, I did number one and then I did number two. That sounds funny. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I think actually it improved those numbers. <laughs> a and B. How about A, a and B? B. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it improved uh, number one and two. So, um, but anyway, so for me, uh, hesitation, there was never hesitation of anything else other than a time factor. And what I know is that when you want to do something, you will make time for it. You will make it happen. And um, I'm a firm believer of that because I've incorporated so many interests, so many things and get them done. But this was something that had to happen for me. And I just was so grateful for me, the changes that I experienced. It was the only reason why I so wanted to, was so excited to to learn this is because of what I was experiencing for myself, um, an obvious, an obvious release, um, uh, doing, you know, working on my liver, you know, um, I, I could just feel a difference in my spleen, you know, the, the overthinking, which I, which I would do anyway. Uh, and so, so all of these things were just like obvious. It's like, wow, this is crazy. I feel a difference. Um, so yeah, so hesitation was only based on my time, but I made it happen and I did it I, and I was able to get um, both certifications and I am so proud of, of 
uh, having done that. I'm really so proud of having those certifications and the teacher, um, both teachers, like Chris, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Sonia. Mm -hmm. Actually, in the second lesson in our um, the series that we just put out, we talked about breaking the time barrier and mm -hmm. reclaiming your time mm -hmm. and how quite often we have this illusion like time is limited. But, you know, as you know, when we can step into our expansive self, really anything is possible. And sometimes we just use it as an excuse as to give ourselves permission to not do the thing, you know, and that's, that's true. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of what you have to see is like you're using it as an excuse because if it's something else, you know, of somebody, if you like ice cream and your time is, there's a crunch time going and somebody says, oh, guess what? They're giving away your favorite ice cream. You're like, oh, shoot, I have to get to that meeting, but I think I can get that ice cream. I can get that ice cream. <laughs> I can grab that ice there's cream. Time. Well, suddenly there's an extra five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Sherry? Okay, so my biggest concern or hesitation, I actually had several, so I'm, I'm different from the panel. Um, my biggest hesitation was um, imposter syndrome came up for me. Like, who am I to do this? Um, also, you know, do I invest in myself? At the time, um, I wasn't really investing in what I wanted to do. I was investing in what I thought I should be doing, like as far as education or school, um, investing in showing up for other people, but was not practiced at all at showing up for myself. So um, that was the biggest thing. Uh, another issue that came up for me is um, beyond making the investment in myself is that, you know, I'm not Asian, is this cultural appropriation um that that definitely came up for me you know who am i to be sharing this practice um you know and how how would people from this culture feel seeing you know me out there sharing the practice and i have to say that um so i had to do a little bit of internal dialogue and digging like what is coming up for me like am, am i not so invested in myself can i invest in myself you know, I, and then I came to the conclusion, well, I'm not going to teach in public. I'm just going to, I'm getting this for more information. Um, so, and then I am going to take a chance and invest in myself and do something strictly and purely for me, for my benefit. If it happens to benefit people down the line, I won't, I won't go there yet, but I'm going to invest in me. And I'm so glad that I did. Um, I was also concerned about being an effective teacher. Uh, because I have a little bit of trouble with retention, but the beautiful thing about Qigong and the beautiful thing about this practice is as you incorporate it and you learn the material, you can apply what you're learning in real time. Um, so that was a beautiful thing. And um, you know, finally, it was like, am I really going to get out there and do this? I'm out there and I'm doing it now. Um, and it's, it's amazing. I feel confident about what I'm doing. I feel confident about the knowledge that I share. Um, just really feel like it's impactful when I do share, share the practice. I'm teaching people. I watch the light come on. Um, every single class that I teach, I have at least one person come up to me and tell me that my teaching style and the way that I'm open about what I'm sharing and how this has benefited me and how it could benefit them, um, impacts people. And that I feel like is spirit reaffirming to me that sharing and teaching is it's part of my purpose um and always the biggest obstacle is always ourselves so i'm going to say to anybody out there on the fence um if you're worried about cost you're worth it this teaching is worth it it's given me so much information to be able to share as well as tools um show up for yourself and you don't know how you can impact others. And that I think is the greatest gift we can give people um, is to give back in this way where we can share these practices. And it's it's been life-changing for me. I mean, you can look at my name down here, Morning Crane Healing Arts Pacific Northwest. It's taken me on a whole other trajectory in life. 
um, has helped me to heal a tremendous amount of my own uh, stuff. And it's helped me to get out and help others and let them know that you too can have these tools. They're accessible to everybody. You know, this practice is accessible to everybody. Um, so, uh, and I'm truly grateful to, to Chris and Parisa for, for being able to sit here today and sit on this panel. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Sherry. And um, real quick before we move on to Jen, um, Chris, maybe you can talk a little bit about, because you've had many teachers, Chinese teachers that have, you know, long lin lineages. And I remember Sifu Tony was down in LA, if, was that like a month ago? And one of the things that he had talked about, about this, this teaching being meant for all people. Yeah, and and even though it might have originated in China, it's not a Chinese thing, and I think that's where you have to separate it, and the depth for which uh, the the philosophy, and that's why once again I'm just going to reiterate about uh, my teaching style and in incorporating the philosophy, not just doing the movements, is because then when you go, even if you have a group of Chinese students, which I've had, you know, I taught for Marvell Semiconductor in Silicon Valley. I started with them when they were a very small company and grew with them until where they are now when they took over all three comms buildings. And all my students were all Chinese. Qigong was considered taboo in, in China with the younger generation. And so I was teaching Tai Chi, Tai Chi with them, but also I incorporated the, the, the Qigong. And I was able, luckily, to change the perspective surrounding the uh, the fear uh, that they've been taught from their country, from uh, from their homeland. And the reason why the fear was installed is because if you could empower somebody, guess what? You lose control, right? You lose, lose control and it gave people the power. And so we teach in a method and I instill these philosophies. So that way, if you are talking to somebody who is Asian, that it it will make sense. And one last thing really quick is that, I don't know if you guys saw my post on Instagram. Uh, I don't know, every once in a while I'll post something uh, about a, a week ago. I translated my first book of Qigong for Self-Refinement into Vietnamese. And the reason why I did that was because I didn't realize, but because of my old fight coach, Kung Lee, uh, got me all kinds of publicity that I could never uh, pay for myself. And one time, Priest and I were doing uh, uh, doing life insurance. They had to do a blood draw. They came to our office at Morning Crane in San Jose. And I came out of the bathroom, and the gentleman administering the blood draw was Vietnamese. And he says, oh, you're Kung Lee's Chinese medicine doctor. I said, what? I said, how'd you know that? Because I don't know this guy. He goes, oh, you're very popular in, in, in Vietnam. you know. And so at the time, we did a Google Analytics search. And besides the U.S., the next country was Vietnam was the most followers that I had paying attention to what it was I was doing. Fast forward, uh, one of our Qigong students, Quinn Lee, uh, who's also a martial artist, she agreed to translate the book into Vietnamese. We got that done. And then, I don't know, about six months before we moved out of San Jose, I gave this aversion to a um, shop owner, a Vietnamese shop owner in San Jose, an older gentleman. And then I came back in a couple of weeks later and he said to me, he said, you know, as a young child, our parents and elders would try to teach us this deep philosophy of yin and yang and five elements, but it was way too complicated and way too confusing. He said, the way that you wrote this book, it makes it now understandable. So this is where it transcends, right? The, the way that I'm teaching is it transcends whatever nationality that you are. It's all encompassing and it, it includes all people. Mm -hmm. Can I ask Thank you real you. quick, um, <clears throat> Chris? Um, is 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 Falun Gong? I mean, is there any connection? Because that's the forbidden. I know in in China, because people are in prison still because of practicing Falun Gong. Yeah, so Falun Gong is a style of Qigong, and the reason why it's such a threat is because, you know, there's different things that people could do with Qigong, including internal strength and power. And also spiritual development as well, too, which is a total side subject. And that's what the party is afraid of, is uh, the CCP is afraid of, is, is that uh, very thing. So, yeah, so a lot of 
even my Taoist teacher and the level two QTT program, I don't know if you remember, but the book that's given is Tao, the Subtle Universal Law by Master Hua Jing Ni. And Master Ni, his sons could go back to China, but Master Ni is not allowed to. Um, he's a what 38th generation Taoist and Chinese medicine master. And they don't want the population to know this kind of information, right? Because again, it's about power. So the Falun Gong is a form of Qigong as well, too. Uh, people, yes, have been persecuted, uh, have been imprisoned as a result of practicing it because it's too much of a threat to those that want to uh, control other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The spiritual, I think the the spiritual piece is, I think, way bigger than, you know, people realize, which, which I should say is one of the things that I understood with it which is why I understood the science and that's the science that they're afraid of. If people yeah. tap into the science, the actual science of the, you know, of the, the practice where, what you can actually do with it. Yeah. What you can actually do with it. And what I tell people is, is that it doesn't matter what religious background you come from. When you go inside with these practices, it creates an internal alchemy. Internal alchemy is internal change. The ancient developed ones, uh, they would talk about, and this is going back to ancient Greece, they would talk about in, uh, combining uh, different types of metals and ores in order to become enlightened. And, uh, uh, and it wasn't talking about external metals. It was talking about what's already contained within the self. And, uh, and if you understand, and then if the teaching was correct in the fact to, to give you the guideposts for which are the steps to attain that, that becomes threatening. And, and you know, we, we, we actually saw it over the pandemic is that when people are spiritually sound, a lot of times they're also mentally sound. When they truly have an understanding of the all-knowingness, whatever you want to call it, then that's power right there. Because then there's no more fear. Fear goes away right? You can't control anybody when fear goes away. Can't control anybody. Because when you believe, when you have that kind of faith and understanding, and you have that kind of openness, then uh, that's that's true power. And so, yeah, so that spiritual component of, of Falun Gong is, um, is uh, definitely uh, considered a no-no because they don't want people to have that. And going back to the pandemic, we actually saw that when they started closing down churches allowing people to congregate together right and so uh you take away community you take away a, a place of worship a place of uh to, of faith and then guess what people's minds are easy more influenced more vulnerable yeah. wow Ooh, that gave me goosebumps who was that roosevelt who said the only thing we have to fear is fear itself jen uh, i think everybody kind of touched on my concerns um Mostly it was, I found the practice on Thanksgiving. We, there, I talk about how Chris and his epic outfit on Thanksgiving in 2019. <laughs> and I just was hooked and doing it. And then I think it was end of January. And I'm like, who am I? Like, I've done this two months. Like, who am I to like do this? I'm not, I don't, I shouldn't be doing this. Um, but it had been a long time since I had done, like Sherry says something for myself. And so it was really about taking, do I, and then time, as Sonia said, you know, mom, wife, teacher, like so many things going on. And so just really um, saying, no, you know, this, there's, it's talking to you, talking to me, like this is here for a reason. And that's, I'm going to jump to number four because Sherry kind of touched on it. Um, like, what would you tell them? I said, if you're here, um, you, sign up because you're here for a reason. The universe is telling you something. I, I found that random email about free Qigong on Thanksgiving and it something in the back of my brain was like, you need to do that. And the more we listen to ourselves, um, talking to us ourselves, the more the signs that are put up, um, it's just, it, it opens you up and, and you're here for a reason and you're hearing these words and um, it's a beautifully done program. Um, you're going to gain so much uh, for yourself that you can't go wrong. And if you never, ever teach, uh, we talked about the name of it, you know, teacher training, you know, a lot of people are never going to teach, um, but you're, you know, you, you're going to train yourself and it's just a thing that 
everybody, you know, I'm a teacher and I think everybody should be required. It should be much deeper than what I do. But again, I'm just trying to introduce it. Um, but again, and you know, it's for you, it's for you. It's an investment in yourself. Um, as Sonia says, don't make excuses. We make a lot of excuses why we can't do things. I come across this a lot with people that want help and they kind of complain about that. You give them a little thing and then they go, oh, but I can't do that because of this and then that. Okay, you're not there yet. You're not there yet. So I think you're here. You're listening to this. Why not? Right? What are you going to lose? Just saying. That's right. What are you going to lose? Just saying. All right. Well, we're almost at the hour. So let's just do a final thought from each, each panelist. Um, and then we'll wrap it up. Just one final thought. Uh, for me, I would say um, I followed a, a a uh, motivational leader for years and years, and I listened to hours and hours and hours of his lectures. Uh, it's a gentleman named Jim Rohn, and uh, I just learned so much from him. And one of the things he said, the reason people don't do well in life is because they don't feel well. If you feel well, you can't go wrong. For me, uh, these trainings, these teachings, this community has allowed me to step into freedom. So I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Um, uh, if nothing else, do it for yourself. Um, that's what I would say. This is really about you. I had started out uh, being about me. Uh, it wasn't like, oh my God, I can do this and then I can teach it. It was really about me and wanting to empower myself. Uh, with this information and with these tools. And so it has to begin there. And then you have to ask yourself the question, um, what what is my hesitation? And allow a truthful answer to come to you. And then you can determine what the steps are that are required that you're going to need to take to actually participate. That's what I would say. Thank you. Well said. Get off the fence and do it. I'm just going to say, get off the fence and do it. Invest in yourself. Even if you have no intention of teaching, invest in yourself, do it. You never know where the path is going to take you. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Well said. Thank you so much. And I, uh, life's a journey. It's better with Qigong and, um, it's just, just do it. I hate that it's Nike's logo or saying or whatever, but you just need to. You're here. You're here listening and you will not be sorry. You will not be sorry. It'll be the most profound thing that you've done and that you can share with people you love. Thank you. Well, I'm just going to go to the comment real quick because Denise said, I'm so appreciative for the invite. This has been very emotional to listen to each of you. Top of my head has been buzzing. Bzz, little buzz on the top of your head. <laughs> That's cool. Well, thank you so much, Denise. Thank you, Chi Tom, Jen, Sherry, Sonia, Mr. Chris. My heart is full. Yeah, and right. I just want to I just want to thank everybody for joining up in the panel and everybody because uh, everybody that showed up here today, uh, Tom, Jen, Sonia, Sherry, you know. Uh, uh, seeing all the transformations and and what you're saying today came from the heart and that's what we you know that's what we value so having it come from the heart means so much and also thank you if you're watching this recording thank you for tuning in and please join us if you feel called we'd love to have you